What's your creepiest glitch in the matrix or unexplainable thing that's ever happened to you? A few years ago, when my grandmother had to move into a nursing home and my mother and I set up her room, I stepped on her balcony for a break and looked at the gardens surrounding the home. Most houses around were mansions from around 1900, all with gardens. I looked at one of the gardens and looking between the trees, I saw a beautiful old pool belonging to one of the mansions, old concrete, with ornaments and a pergola around it, more like a fountain, but square and deep enough to swim in, and a tiny pump shed, now all in disrepair, overgrown with no water. I remembered how I once went there as a kid for one of my friend's birthdays who lived in that house. It was a cool party and a fond memory that made me smile. Nice summer evening, all the kids had fun, parents and my birthday friend's slightly older sister were sitting at the other end of the huge garden, drinking lemonade and eating cake. I went inside the shed to find the present I wanted to give to my friend, but coming back, I somehow stumbled and fell into the water. I remembered my thoughts about how embarrassing that was and how my awesome present will now probably be damaged by the water. I remember the other kids laugh and so on and on. Remembering all of this, I reflexive told my mother, who was working on setting up some of the shelves, oh right, look. There's that pool I went to as a kid, remember? Do you know what he and his sister do now? It's a shame they let it get into. And then I stopped, because I wanted to finish the sentence with, into that state of disrepair, it was such a nice pool back before the war. My mother looked at me confused and suddenly, I slid back into reality. I was 25 and the last war in my country was World War II. We had some of the nurses right at that moment and had no chance to talk about it again, and I did not bring it up later because it was just too weird. There was no way I could have known any of the people living in those mansions, and I know for a fact that I have never been to a kid's birthday involving a private pool. But I also vividly remember everything. I remembered in that moment, the sound, the way everything looked, just like a normal memory, but everything in this memory has the look of the 1920s, clothes, haircuts, furniture, etc. I even remember what the inside of the shed looked like, some old-timey gardening equipment and some tubes and pumps. I even remember being greeted by the parents and my way from the front door through the big hall with parquet floor and high ceilings back out into the garden. I remember the smell and it makes me incredibly nostalgic. Since then, I remembered even more details, like knowing about a kid drowning during that birthday party, but I chalked that up as my imagination going crazy. Still, the original memories remain. I was driving with my friend and we were slowing down to turn on her street. A purple orb about the size of a basketball appeared out of nowhere and seemingly floated very slowly across the street. We both saw it and were weirded out, we were like, what is that? We were creeped out for the rest of the night. One late night, me and my friend, same friend as above, we're sitting at the kitchen table drawing. All of a sudden, we both got a terrible weird creepy vibe. We both looked up towards the hallway and saw a six-foot-tall fleshy creature that had the same wounds as Freddy Krueger. It was light pink and it disappeared quickly after. We got all of our stuff and ran to my room. Three to four years later, I had completely forgot about it by now. I was walking to my room and I was taking selfies. I took a selfie and for a split second, guess what appeared in the background? That same fleshy creature. I was so unsettled. Especially since I wasn't even thinking about it. I had completely forgot about it. It wasn't in the picture anymore, but it was for a split second. This one wasn't my own experience, it was my dad's. I had just gotten out of school and opened the front door. He was in the living room sitting down, and when he saw me, his face looked like he had seen a ghost. I asked what was wrong. He said, I saw you come inside 10 minutes ago and you even said, hi dad. I was 9 or 10 years old and I didn't have school on Wednesday, yet, but my parents had to go to work. My father worked all day while my mother only the afternoon, and I was always somewhat scared of being left alone in our house, so I always put TV on in our living room, even if I was in my room just to have some background voices. I am also someone who is rarely without headphones even when I was a child, and I remember that one day, while I had my music on, I heard a little girl giggling, twice. As if she was next to me and it didn't come from my music. So I decide to go to the living room, cause I let the TV on, except it wasn't on. I rushed back to my bed and waited for my parents to come back. Years later, I still don't understand what the heck was that. So, backstory. In our house, there has been random unexplained activity like lights going on and off which we have usually chalked up to ear thing in the past. And, we're a Desi family. 
there has been tons of apparent black magic that has been done on my parents and on me by weird relatives. We tend to not believe in it and move on with our lives. We lived on the second floor of an empty house. No tenants. Nobody else on the property but my parents, my brother, my dog and me. The night in question, I had two friends over who are both petite girls and were with me in my room. Also, we have a security personnel who is always stationed outside our house. So, nobody could get into the property and let alone, unlock the door to the staircase and then to our floor, and then get in. Thanks to ultra-paranoid parents, we were locked in. Around 2.30 am. I shut the door of my room that connects to the lobby. Now, the three bedrooms are interconnected. So, you can access the lobby through each, but also, you can go to my brother's room through mine and my parents through his. My dog was in my parents' room. Getting back to the locking of my door, I do that. I lock the door in my bedroom that connects to the lobby and come and sit at the edge of my bed. This means that my back is against a door. Since my door is a bit broken, if you lock it at the top and someone put their body against it, they can creak a gap open in it just a tiny bit, but of course, since it's locked, it won't open all the way. I was fighting with my friends for not having to sleep in the middle and took an actual picture of them to show them how stupid they looked, all jokes, when I heard the door from the lobby cave in and then, what sounded like an ailing man screaming in abject pain. It was horrifying. The screaming was by no means hushed, but was intentionally probably the loudest there could be. I thought I was fleeing imagining it when I looked up at my friends, and they were both staring at me white-eyed, frozen in fear. One of them had tears in her eyes. The other just looked more worried. Now, the first scream was a breath full. It went on for about 10 to 20 seconds straight and then a break, and then another long stretched out scream. I fleeing got scared because first thought was that there was an intruder. I went to my brother's room and he was fast asleep in his bed with his connecting door to the lobby locked. The second scream ended and my dog barked, so it wasn't just the three of us who heard it. I then rushed to my parents' room, and my mom was sat straight in her bed on high alert, and my dog was extremely aggressive and on full alert too. My mom and I, accompanied with our dog, both immediately went out to the lobby to check, and everything was locked in the house and no intruders. I checked the smallest of books and crannies. We called our guard on the intercom, and he stated that nobody had gone in or out. We still took to the rest of the two floors and the terrace and not a single soul. Haven't been able to explain it till date, and I now fear even talking about it with the fear that it might happen again. This is something I've only shared with my cousin, and no one else. Partially because it sounds crazy, but also because it makes me experience an extreme happiness and sadness all at the same time. In 2013, I was at the lowest point in my life I had ever been. Or at least that's what it felt like to me, a kid at the time. I just dropped out of high school and moved out of state because my folks had split and I couldn't bear to pick who to live with. I would have chosen my dad, but he begged me to pick mom. He knew it'd break her heart if I didn't. I ended up getting a place with my cousin in California and worked full time doing cable installation. Watch those Comcast guys closely, they love cutting random wires. I worked six days a week, from the early morning till the job was done. I had no friends and barely talked to anyone from back home. I was depressed as heck. One night on this particularly difficult job, I went up on the roof of this customer's house to take a break. It was on the airbase, so the customer was a stand-up Air Force guy. He offered me a beer, and at this point I said flurbo it. I was on the roof drinking by myself, sweaty and miserable, just looking out into the night. All of a sudden a few houses away, I see a light waving back and forth. I put my glasses on and see this girl waving her phone at me. I pull my phone out, turn on the light, and wave it back. I see her face now because the light is reflecting off of her big goofy smile, and for a moment, I'm filled with happiness. That smile always brought me happiness. Customer calls to me, so I wave goodbye, wearing a smile of my own, and head down the ladder. Fast forward a year. My mother wants to meet with some friends at Olive Garden, I know, she doesn't know any better, but still, unlimited breadsticks. We walk in and introduce ourselves to everyone. I go to shake this girl's hand, and she smiles. Hey, nice to meet you. I know that smile anywhere. I shake her hand, smile back. Then her eyes widen, and we both laugh. Wait. I start laughing and say, yeah, on the roof like a year ago. Her entire face turns red, and she puts her hand on my arm laughing in disbelief. We sit at the table that night next to one another and talk about everything. A few weeks later, we're dating. Now if that wasn't surreal enough, it gets stranger. 
One of our first dates, we're lying on a blanket in the grass of the Davis Arboretum. We're watching the stars and I'm playing Sigur Ros on my phone. I keep thinking in my head, come on, just kiss her, stop being such a wuss. I take a look to see if anyone is around us, when very faintly, I make out two figures sitting on a bench, a couple of feet away. Now, I can't see too well, but I do see it's a man and a woman. The girl has her head on this man's shoulder, and then when my eyes focus through the dark a bit more, it seems like the outline of his face is just looking blankly, directly at me. I look away in embarrassment. I wonder if they heard us being all cutesy the entire time. I wonder if they think Sigur Ros is beautiful or sounds like a bunch of cats. Either way I hug my GF and ask if she's ready to go. Five years pass and they are the happiest years of my life. They really were, no matter what. Eventually though, all good things come to an end. I ended up attending one college while she went off to another. Distance and time away from one another began to take us in other directions. We cruised apart. One day she and I met up. We just wanted to talk things out and I believe we both knew what was coming. We took a seat on an old bench and reminisced. We laughed and we cried about the good and the bad. We decided it was best that we end things before any more resentment built up. She laid her head on my shoulder and I heard a familiar tune that made my stomach tight. I looked to the right and my heart stopped. I couldn't move. It was us. We were just kids it seemed like. We were laying on the blanket, her on my chest, and the phone playing music in my hand. I'll never forget that night. A night that I experienced twice, feeling complete happiness and sadness all at once. Perhaps it was meant to be that way. I couldn't change it, but I can be thankful for the best five years of my life. Some backstory and setting up the story here. I spent a few years when I was from the age of five to nine in a haunted house. An old Victorian in an old run downtown that used to be big before they shut the factories down. This house had a lot of history and a creepy vibe to it. My two sisters and my bedrooms were upstairs. I had the back room and it was always freezing cold in there, even in the hot months, and I had really vivid nightmares every single night. One night, I dreamt I was standing in a corner of a large room with a table to one side and a window and door to my other. There was a large looming figure in a trench coat unpacking a suitcase on a bed. The figure kept taking a piece of clothing out and spreading out their belongings. They stopped what they were doing and turned slowly to look at me. I didn't see their face, but I was terrified and woke up in a cold sweat. I ended up switching rooms with my half-sister who only stayed with us in the summertime because of my nightmares. Fast forward to age 16. My mom and I had to move out of her boyfriend's house in a hurry. It was an unexpected move and we really had nowhere to go. My mom's friend offered her parents' house because they were vacationing overseas for a few months and they had an in-law apartment underneath their main living area. So we could temporarily stay there until my mom could find something a bit more permanent. I walk into the door and see one big bed with a table by a window. I put my suitcase on the bed, still wearing my trench coat, because I wanted to unpack and then go for a walk. I start taking out my luggage when I feel eyes on my back coming from the corner of the room. And that's when that nightmare I had when I was six, ten years previous to present day, clicks in my head. I'm fleeing terrified. I slowly turned to look to the corner of the room and there was nothing there. But in that moment, I saw it, not only through my eyes, but in my mind's eye of that nightmare. And ever since then, I have constant deja vu.